Tuesday, February 22nd, 2017. I uh, appreciate your patience here this morning, having a little bit of a technical issue, and uh, we're only able to get the room right now. I can just get confirmation this time that audio video is now officially working. I can get started. I won't waste anyone's time any further. You can simply type a Y or yes into the chat box there, and we'll be good to go. All right, thank you very much for those responding. Again, I really do appreciate your patience this morning, uh, getting a little bit of a later start here than anticipated, so we'll keep this session abbreviated. I don't want to keep you guys uh, and girls any longer than necessary. As always, if you have any other comments or questions, feel free to put them in the chat box at any point in time. If you're looking for trade-specific insight, please include your entry stop and time frame so I know you've gotten into the market, where your risk lies and what your point of view is. Beyond that, please be aware that any opinion I disseminate is mine and mine alone and does not constitute trade advice on behalf of Daily Effects or IG Group, so please don't treat it as such. All right. Um, this morning, uh, the U.S. dollar index is continuing to gain, although it's not exactly in the, let's say, form that it's taken place over the last several days. If you take a quick look at some of the risk markets here, S&P 500, uh, let's say UK 100, all right, or... In the French CAC 40, we've started to see equities come off a little bit. Not a big move, but enough such that the yen crosses have started to pull back in today. Uh, dollar again yesterday jumped up from about 113 to roughly 113.75, and we've reversed that completely today. Yet when you turn to something like euro dollar, you'll see that we just set new monthly lows. We cracked on below the 105.21 area, and now we are trading 105.06. So clearly this is not dollar-related. This is risk-related. And, you know, if we turn to euro yen, here we are losing the most recent swing level here from February 8th in that 119.33 area. Let's put price on here. All right. If we were to turn the page over to pound yen, you can see here how it looks like it's very possible that we are getting ready for a break as well. So overall, the dollar index is perking up. All right. We cleared out yesterday's highs. We're on approach to the high that we saw last week. It looks like that we could be on our way to more gains. Of course, we're going to need to see a little bit more price development here. But all in all, we can say that today's pullback, say in dollar yen, is not symptomatic of a broader dollar sell-off. Okay, uh, I think ultimately, given what we've seen and heard from the Federal Reserve and policy officials the last several days, it's looking like there is a greater and greater chance that the March meeting yields a rate hike. Now, as things stand, I wouldn't, you know, put any significant uh, uh, amount of money behind that bet only because the odds just simply aren't there yet. If you look at the Fed Funds Futures contract, still less than a 40% chance of a rate hike. That's significant as over the last 20 years, we've seen that the Fed has never raised rates unless that front month contract was pricing at least a 60% chance. So what does that mean? Well, you know, if we get more development, we see that odds continue to run higher. If they go up past 60%, then yeah, color me uh, in for a, a rate hike next month. But until then, I think the markets will be surprised. I think they'll, they'll be underprepared, even so, if we get a rate hike uh, next month. Okay, um, As it were, the fact that there is still some room for markets to price in price action or, or, or rate action over the coming weeks means that there's still opportunity. There's still juice to be squeezed, if you will, from this potential trade. So dollar index right now, key level to look into about 101.72. Um, the high that we had last week was 101.76. Where do we arrive at these levels? Well, you see here, you go out and outline some key levels on this chart. We have numerous highs up into this area. We have this inside bar reversal. In fact, when you look at price action just last week, we have another inverted hammer up there. 
So it looks like this is a key level, okay? I would think that given the weighting of DXY that if we to see some significant development here, Euro dollar has to be front and center. Euro is 57.6% of DXY and therefore it's going to play an increasingly important role in the breakdown. Number one thing, and I already see a question here, should be worried about European politics again? It certainly seems like that should be back on the table. Um, the odds of a Marine Le Pen victory, if you will, seem to be increasing in France. We've seen those French-German uh, yield spreads start to widen out. Typically speaking, given the relationship we've seen between French yields and German yields, that yield spread has been narrowing for the past several years, reflecting lower credit risk. So now the very notion that we're seeing this ratio turn around and shoot much higher suggests that investors are becoming more concerned about the potential state of politics a month or two out from now. I don't think it's just France though that people need to be concerned about. Uh, in Holland, Geert Wilder is gaining some traction the last few weeks and appears to be tied or point ahead in the polls. That's important because he's cut from the same cloth as, you know, Nigel Farage or Marie Le Pen or Donald Trump. He, he wants to take uh, uh, this populist vision of politics and bring it mainstream and he himself has said that Holland could leave the EU should he becomes Prime Minister. Now, it's not such a direct path for him in Holland only because no other party really agrees with his point of view. So for him to get a governing coalition together seems like it might be difficult. In France, you might be able to say the same thing, although as things were, Le Pen is not on track to win the second round of presidential election votes. Uh, France will head to the polls in April to sort out the top two candidates from the rest of the field, and then in May they'll vote on those two candidates. I think by and large what we're seeing here in the Euro, if it's Euro dollar, if it's Euro yen, it's this reignition of concerns around the European political scene that we haven't seen materialize in several, call it, almost years. And I know Brexit happened last year, but that wasn't directly related to the Euro. The Euro was hit as a knock-on effect. Right? In this case, the German, or excuse me, the uh, well, German elections are in September, but I mean the Dutch, the French elections are, are much more relevant and uh, directly related to the upcoming uh, price action, if you will. All right, uh, of course, if we're going to talk about the Euro, how could we not talk about Euro Pound? Okay, we've been watching this very patiently the last several weeks, waiting to see if this is a head and shoulders pattern up here. I know that there is a tendency for people to say, oh, this is a head and shoulders pattern. Well, uh, not technically yet because we haven't broken the neckline. All right. And until we break this neckline right around that 8340 area, depending upon if you take it horizontally or even if you want to take it on a diagonal here, the rising trend line from the lows now has us going below, well, 8340. Look at these indicators here. Price is now below the moving averages, 8.21.34, or in this case, 8.13.34. See, MACD is now trending lower below the signal line. Stochastics is heading lower into bearish territory. All things considered, Euro pound looks like it's starting to drift to the downside. And on a short-term basis, we go to a four-hour chart here. It looks like we had this bear flag form up. Taking that measured move, it calls for a shift down into that 82.60 level, all right? If you look at, if 
if you look at price action recently, it kind of looks like we just cascaded lower, right? Sell-off, consolidation, sell-off. This quick rebound we had gave us this evening star candle cluster here on the four-hour time frame, right up against that former support level, and sure enough, that was right before we sold off again. Now, if you notice, Euro Pound is starting to actually trade to the top side today, so giving respect where it's due. Seeing that pound dollar has come off quite a little bit here. And this triangle that we're, we find ourselves trading in persists. One, two, three, four touches, one, two, three, four touches. We haven't been able to make a break one way or the other. So I would be looking at pound dollar, honestly, as uh, the symmetrical triangle would certainly be a place of interest in my my book um, going forward. I wouldn't necessarily want to play it to the top side, per se. I think given the, the nature of what's going on with the dollar right now and the fact that the pound is almost 12% of the DXY, it means that if dollar index is making a move one way or the other, particularly if it's going to the top side, then pound should be carried along for that ride. Pound dollar should move lower. Right. I think if you're looking to go long the pound, I think there's you know, better venues, if you will, like what we just saw in uh, Euro pound. But if you're going to be short the pound, I think pound dollar, pound yen represent the most interesting opportunities just given the relative strength of those currencies compared to everything else. Um, pound yen here, for example, is starting to consolidate in its own symmetrical triangle. And insofar as that we haven't seen a break one way or the other yet, I still think that there's plenty of opportunity. All right. Now it looks like we're leading to the downside, but there's real no clear indication from the moving averages, from the, the indicators here, right? Seeing that the eight EMA is above the excuse me, is now below the thirteen EMA, which is actually now below the thirty four. Stochastics are still not through fifty. MACD is just squeaking below that zero line. So momentum is picking up, not too convincing just yet. Pound yen though, given what's going on in the market and let's say given what's happening with again the Brexit bill vote going underway right now and Article 50 being triggered sometime in the next few weeks, I'm, I'm of the mindset that pound is not going to have an easy time rallying. I got a question here. How do we feel about the Aussie yen and Kiwi yen? You know, as uh, if you're with us on Monday, we're saying there's a potential here that this is merely the retest of the breakout point, or just as viable, this could be a false breakout. Now, what would be the difference between the two? Well, if this is truly a uh, uh, a breakout to the top side, we're going to want to see one thing and one thing in particular respected. If you look at price action since October 3rd, price has closed above the 34 EMA, the daily 34 EMA, every day. Not once has it closed below. We've seen several tests of, but no closes below said level. All right. During this time, MACD has remained above the signal line. So first things first, now that this 34 EMA is creeping on up here, we're getting very close. The differential between the 34 and current price is rather narrow. If we were to see price close below this level, which from where we stand is not that far, only about 70 pips, a little less, 67 pips right now, that would be a major warning sign. That would be a really big tell that this market is not ready to continue significantly higher. If we see price hang around these levels right now, which you could argue were the former resistance levels, which you could argue was the breakout point, 
if price is able to get a retest of the 34 EMA and does not find itself trading higher above it by the end of the day, they very well would have a, a good deal of evidence, a note, if you will, that the strength and the nature of the uptrend has started to break. One of the uh, other yen crosses we've been looking at was Kiwi Yen. Kiwi Yen's been stuck in this sideways range for the past several weeks, whereas Aussie Yen has tried to rally outside, and we've seen Dollar Yen stabilize. Kiwi Yen has actually kind of been like a stick in the mud. Uh, part of the reason, of course, is you know if you turn to a New Zealand dollar chart here, when you go back to the rate decision that we had earlier this month on the 8th, February 8th, the RBNZ came out and said, listen, we want a week of Kiwi dollar. You know, if Kiwi dollar was trading seven cents lower from here versus the US dollar, that would make us pretty happy. You know, a way to tell that they were using not just rhetoric, but also their monetary policy to drive home that point. All right, their overnight cash rate is 1.75% right now. Let's just say, let's round up. Instead of going out to the 100th decimal place, let's go out to the 10th decimal place, which is what they do in their forecasts. So we'll call 1.75 rounded up is 1.8. The RBNZ's average overnight cash rate through the end of 2017 is 1.8% per their own forecasts. So going into that meeting early this month when we saw that the market was pricing in a 76% chance of a rate hike by the end of this year. And the RBNZ said, those odds may be high because we only see the OCR at its current level for now. It was a clear signal to the market that they were too bullish. So Kiwi Yen has had some difficulty as a result of what's been going on with the RBNZ. If we do see a break down from here, we have very clear indication that this is a double top. All right, And the trend that we are watching for here, price action above that 34 EMA, it had been holding true since October 17th. Closes up, but no, I mean, tests up, but no closes below set level. All of a sudden, we get down to February 8th, the day of the RBNZ meeting, and this trend cracks. And since then, there hasn't been a bounce higher. All right, We've seen that price action has started to whittle its way down through that moving average. MACD is down below the zero line. Stochastic's trending lower below 50. Could be a tell here by the market that the yen crosses want to turn around. Uh, I, I see a question here on oil and the Canadian dollar. Oil made an attempt at a breakout yesterday out of its recent triangle, but no such luck. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to get bowled up on oil until we see price break that 101, um, excuse me, that 101, that January uh, 3rd is converting the date into a price. Until we break through the January 3rd high, which was a key reversal here at the start of the year, then price technically still has a cap on it. And yesterday we were able to see price rally up close to that level, but we actually didn't break through. Yes, MACD and stochastics are trending higher. Yes, the moving averages are all starting to participate. So we can acknowledge the fact that bullish momentum is picking up, but what we can't acknowledge is that this is a true breakout just yet. It's possible that it's not. So if we look at what's going on with oil, I'm partial to think that the Canadian dollar may be vulnerable, especially if the dollar is picking up, especially if oil can't break out. Now it's Wednesday, so CAD yen has already started to peak below last week's lows. We're in the middle of the range, so you know, regardless of what your trading style is, if you're a range trader, this is a terrible place to enter. You're flipping a coin, right? You're gonna go long and set your stop below the low, or you're gonna go short and set your stop above the high. Wait till we get to one of these sides of the ranges before we make that decision. If you're a breakout trader, well, we haven't cleared out the range just yet, so you know, what are you to do? Obviously, be patient. 
and I want to emphasize that it's not necessarily a good time depending upon either of those trading styles to get into the market there's no reason to take a trade just for the sake of taking a trade okay that's not how I think a, a, a disciplined trader works all right uh, if you want to trade Canadian dollar dollar CAD given the broader dollar move that's occurring right now is more interesting it's more interesting because we've been bouncing around this 130 to 130.75 area for the past several weeks, right? We've been holding up here support despite the market's best attempts to push it lower, despite the fact that oil's been running up. You know, I've said before that dollar CAD tends to lead the broader dollar index because, now you forget the fact that it's 9.1%, it's a small amount of there. The trade relationship between U.S. and Canada is so significant that dollar CAD tends to lead broader flows. Kind of just like when there's an issue with the euro, the pound or the Swiss franc tend to behave in a similar manner. When there's something going on with the pound, the euro and the Swiss franc are there, right, and vice versa. When dollar CAD's doing well, it typically means that the broader dollar complex is doing well. So as far as I see it, you know, there was an opportunity to get in here initially once we started poking through that 131 area. If you're more conservative entry, then clearing out the recent swing high near 132, 10, 15 uh, is probably the place that you'd want to be. In either case, this is a bullish falling wedge that could be potentially taking shape. A measured move would call for a return back up to the base up here, which even if you waited until 132, 15 for your entry, Right, just want to be more careful. You're still talking about 375 pips of potential gains relative to a stop of, you know, 240 pips. The risk reward is starting to, you know, not be so great anymore. Right, I prefer to keep it at least two to one, but it's still positive. And so the the matter of fact is that there there is a tradable potential pattern down here. Uh, and I, I think more price development is necessary and would be a good thing. Unfortunately, you look at the moving average situation, uh, eight, is below the 21, which is below the 34 still. Stochastics and MACD are rising, but they're still in bearish territory. It's not a great look one way or the other. So more patience is required. All right, but I would definitely keep an eye on dollar cat. I think that this is a Again, given the broader move that we're seeing in the dollar complex, dollar cat is a better place to look than CAD yet. Plain and simple. All right. Um, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. We've been going for about 25 minutes already, uh, despite that late start. Again, I apologize about this tech issue that we were having. For those that were sticking around, I really do sincerely appreciate your patience with me. If you have any other comments or questions, you can always reach out to me through the DailyFX Real-Time Newsfeed. Stock notes on Twitter, at CVECUFX. How do you get there? News, real-time news, as you were. If you want to email me, CVECU at DailyFX.com. Listen, I'll be back tomorrow morning. We're covering the Central Bank Weekly. We'll be talking about the FOMC minutes, which are coming out this afternoon. See how close the Fed may be to raising rates. We'll talk about other central bank moves and uh, your rumors, announcements that we've heard come out over the last week and how they may be impacting FX markets, equity markets, commodities, etc. So feel free to join me there, 7.30 Eastern, 12.30 GMT. You can always access the webinar schedule by going over to Calendar, Webinar, Calendar, and then finding that Central Bank Weekly. I'll toss over a registration link here. Beyond that, again, feel free to get in touch with me at any point in time. If I don't speak to you before, then good luck trading the next 24 hours, and if not, the rest of this week, of course.